so dokey. So, I'm, yeah, you excellent. I'm being, I'm being really given ready. permission to share the screen. Yep, um, yep. So I'm going to to share one of the most said phrases um, since 2020, and that is, I'm going to share my screen. So here we go. We all know that phrase. And then get ready for the next one. It's coming up. The next phrase is coming up. Here we go. Can everybody see my screen? If you'd say in the chat box, that would be great. Um, so hopefully everybody can see my screen. Yep. Let's check the chat there. There we go. That's a yep, yes, good news. Too. Just testing everybody's aware and awake and watching. Um, so today we are talking um, all about cultivating change makers. I'm a little bit early, I understand. I'm, I'm about 12 minutes early, so don't worry. Um, there will still be time for you to, to, to nip off and grab a glass of water or, or use the bathroom um, when I finish. So don't worry. And as I mentioned, there might be a short pause while I sign a piece of paper. So today is all about cultivating change makers, and we'll talk about that soon. But first, I'm going to talk about something else. I'm going to talk about me, um, but just a little bit. So I like flags and apparently using the incorrect colored font. Um, so I like flags, that says. Does anybody know which flag this is? It's my favorite flag. If anyone can get that, you get seven bonus points. Um, any vexillologists in the audience today? Vexillology obviously being the study of flags. Um, if anyone can guess, feel free to put it in the chat. If you can't, I'll tell you very shortly. I love secondhand shirts. They are, they are, uh, the first letter by the way is M. M space I. So, mm, mm, two words. Um, and the capital is Majuro. Uh, I love secondhand shirts. They are like my passion. Um, however, you can see the second one back there, which was one of my favorites. I had it for many years. Um, I ripped that recently. So that has now become uh, a cleaning rag. So that's what I use to, to clean the, the TV screen or my computer screen, something a bit jazzy. Um, and I, I founded Renewable English, um, as I talked about before. Um, I mentioned what it did, what it does. And if you'd like to check it out, check me out, not in that way, obviously, um, feel free. There are some QR codes there, uh, or you can just find me. I'm at Renewable English pretty much everywhere. Um, I'll even, I'll, I'll probably drop the Instagram in there as well at some point, um, but I'm on various places. So if you have, e, there you go, Gabby, it's the Marshall Islands. Yes, Gabby, you're my hero today. It is the Marshall Islands. Um, and yeah, the reason there's those two lines is because th that's the line the islands go in. Um, so there you go, a bit of information about flags. Um, oh, and somebody's at my front door, so I imagine it's my wife. I'm gonna have to ignore her and I'll let the, uh, the gentleman answer the door. That would be great. So what are we going to talk about today? What are we going to talk about today? Well, number one is what is a change maker? What is a change maker? How can we define it? Um, then we'll talk about what can I do, me as a teacher, what is it that I can do? And then there will be a Q and A. Again, there you go, just in case you need it. <laughs> yeah, I know, very brave, very, very brave. <laughs> You know, I don't want the dog to run out as well. So um, hopefully not. So how many of these people do you recognize? How many of these people do you recognize? What do you think? And what do you think about your students? How many do you think they would recognize? There is Camilla, of course. Mbappé. We've got three. We've got The Rock there as well, yeah. Dwayne Johnson, Mbappé, yeah. The girl from Stranger Things, good. Millie Bobby Brown, good. So we've generally got around three, maybe some people four. Um, so I'll show you who they are. I can guarantee that most of your students will probably know at least four of these. So we do have The Rock, Millie Bobby Brown, Mr. Beast, who has the most subscribers on YouTube, um, Camila Cabello and Kylian Mbappé. Next question. How many of these people can you name? 
Hmm. How many of these people can you name? Um, okay, so uh, Alexandra has asked for me to put the QR codes up again. Don't worry, I'll put them on at the end as well. Oh, somebody says they can name five. That's good. Um, somebody said they named five. Somebody else, one. Abraham Lincoln, good. Now, these for me are some of the OG original um, change makers from many, many years ago. There we go. We've got a Newton um now these people all instigated change uh in a very big way so we've got i'm sorry i don't have the instagram for these i'm not sure they they use it anymore um they didn't have it back then these were change makers absolutely so the first one is edward jenner who discovered vaccines um, he actually remember, well, remember, no, I don't know if you know, um, but what he did to eliminate smallpox was he used cowpox um, because it, you know, it combined and it, it acted as the um, as the vaccine. And because cows is, is vaca in Latin, so a vaccination vaca comes from the word cow. Um, so, yeah, he was pretty awesome. Isaac Newton. Before him, everyone was floating around in the air like, whoa, what's going on? Then he discovered gravity and we were like, grounded. Obviously, that's not what really happened. Um, Rosa Parks, a civil rights activist. Then we've got Catherine Johnson, who helped man get to the moon with her mathematics genius. Thomas Crapper. I wonder if anyone can guess what he invented. Any ideas? Um, uh, Emily Wilding Davidson was a suffragette. She threw herself in front of the king's horse um, whilst fighting for the um, the right to vote. And then there's Abraham Lincoln as well, who, of course, amongst other things, um, abolished slavery. Thomas Crapper, by the way, invented the flushable toilet. Uh, so there you go. There's a, a little bit of information about Sir Thomas Crapper. And these were some, as we mentioned, change makers from many years ago. Now, how many of these do we recognize, I wonder? How many of these do we recognize? We've got one. We've got Malala there, yep. Yeah. None, okay. None of them. <laughs> it's tricky. Um, so here we've got Clover Hogan, who is a huge advocate for, for mental um, well-being and eco-anxiety. Uh, she's doing huge things with that. She's advising businesses. She's advising schools. We've got Fion Ferreira, who is an inventor. He's invented a way of removing microplastics from water using magnetism and oil and genius. And he's 22 years old. Uh, he's now studying for his master's. We've got Sammy from Sammy's Buddy Bench. She collects bottle tops and then makes these benches where a buddy bench is where you sit down if you're feeling lonely and somebody else can come and join you. Then, of course, we've got Jane Goodall and David Attenborough, very big, very famous people there. We've got Kids Against Plastic who have been campaigning for about 10 years now. Well, no, eight years, sorry. Then, of course, the world famous Malala. And then Ryan's Recycling, who is, you know, uh, a young lad who goes on and does a lot of recycling. Basically, this is a way of showing your students what they can achieve um, if they become change makers. You know, what can, look at the differences you can make. Excellent. I love beach cleaning organizations. I'm a member of one as well. Um, I absolutely love cleaning. It's litter picking. I know I shouldn't love it. I should hate it. But it's a great way of getting communities to work together. And we'll talk about that very soon. So who or what is a change maker? What do you think a change maker is? Feel free to drop it in the chat. Who or what is a change maker? Change maker. Don't be shy. Oh, I like that one. Makes life easier. It's able to make a change. Oh, oh, very important. So. This is a, a definition. This is not the definition. This is a definition. Someone who is taking creative action to solve a social problem. Exactly. Um, so tenacious about a greater good, deeply connected, and team players. 
Now, it's often something we forget is the team players. We see one person and we think that person is doing all of that. But you need to think about everybody behind them. And a word people also get really caught up on in this is creative. People would say, I'm not creative. I'm not, I'm naturally not creative. I can't paint. I can't sing. I can't write music. I can't draw. I can't dance. I can't take photos. You know, I'm not creative. Being creative isn't just arts. Being creative is finding a way to solve a problem. Being creative is, is a way of getting around a problem that you couldn't think of before. I don't know. Maybe you knock over a glass of water and there is no towel around. So you take off your cardigan and you use it to dry the water. You've, you've been creative to solve that problem. You are being creative. Um, you are not you know, just sitting back and not doing something. So it's really important. Mo on his way. To, see, he is a change maker in doing that. We can all be change makers. And we'll talk more about that very, very soon. But making, he's, again, he's solving a problem creatively. And these are some of the traits that we have in change makers. Um, that they're intentional about solving a problem. They are motivated to act and they are creative. So these are some of the different ideas behind it. So we're being intentional about solving a problem. So you're not doing it because you want more likes on Instagram. You're intentional. You're going out there to make a difference, not because you want likes. So these are courageous, of course. Absolutely. These are some of the different types of change makers. As we said, it's not just the people screaming on the front line. We've got designers and policy makers. They're the social architects, the influencers, people like ourselves, educators, researchers, journalists, parents. But, you know, the, the way that we can spread this message and influence people's ideas. Um, investors, where are people putting their money? Where are you putting your money? Where are you teaching your students to put their money? Think about which bank that they're opening um, their account with and all of these different things that can, you know, they... A way to, to get around um, all of this is to help them to learn where they should be investing their money um, from a young age. Then, you know, maybe we have some future lawyers, some future accountants, some future programmers. If they're learning about this, they can learn about doing it in a green way. Again, with our engineers and our scientists, work with our students you know, make a board game made out of plastic waste. You're doing engineering in that or make a, a robot or a car or something using plastic waste. You're using their engineering. So do experiments with your students to, to see where a plant grows best in a classroom, you know, to see which plant thrives the most, the one with good soil or the one with soil full of acid. Um, obviously, you're going to see these different things and you're going to see which of your students could perhaps grow into that and then we have the community organizers so maybe you have a school eco club or something like that focusing on that is super important so that's what a change maker is that's what a change maker does i guess so let's have a look at the most important question what can i do there is so much that you can do as an educator, as a teacher, as a teacher trainer, as whatever you may be. There's so much that you can do to help your students become change makers. Now, for me, the, the, the biggest impact that, that you can have, it's not with your individual actions. Every, you know, everybody says, you know, every little help, it does. It really does. But you walking to school is that that's not going to save the world it's not going to save the world just you walking to school however getting your whole community to walk to school will reduce the impact there so we're going to look at what we can do to help our students take that next step beyond simply turning off the tap when they brush their teeth um beyond doing the recycling um just that step further to make it a more community-wide approach. Now, we're not talking about the world yet. That's coming up. First, we're talking about our communities and our, the influence we have over our communities. 
So there are three steps, according to me. Obviously, I'm you know, <laughs> I don't decide don't decide how many steps there really are. But I have three steps to help my students to become change makers. The first step is to engage our students, engage them in an issue, engage them in something they're going to believe in. The next step, empower. A word we use an awful lot um, in as teachers to empower our students, to help our students get power within themselves to, to go on and make a difference. And now the third step, or I like to call it the third E, enact. So we are going to engage our students in a problem, empower them to do something, and then that next step is them going out there and actually doing it. So the first step, the obvious first step, is to engage your students. Engage them. And the best way to engage them is to make sure you know what they are passionate about. How can we know what they're passionate about? Well, it's quite difficult. Because one student will be passionate about one thing, another student will be passionate about something else. So a great place to start is with some variety. Talk about the different sustainable development goals and what they are aiming at. And see if you can find a connection with your students with those. You know, perhaps they are very focused on the, the mental well-being of their classmates. Um, something that it seems is more and more important. Although when these goals were made in, in 2015, so eight years ago, when these goals were, were written up within good health and well-being, there's only one single point about mental well-being. I feel in the last eight years that has shifted um, somewhat. But you will be able to find something for your students, something for all of your students within these goals. There is such a nice variety here that you will be able to find something that they are interested in. Perhaps they want to be um, business people. They want to be entrepreneurs. Well, look at responsible uh, consumption and production. Look at how they can have a responsibly built model. You know, they, how are they gonna package their model? Look at these different ideas. Um, I'm not sure about eight. Decent work, very important. Economic growth, ooh, a bit conflicted with that one. Um, but let's continue. So the, the key to engaging your students is interest. It is 100% interest. That If your students are not interested, then they're not going to do anything, basically. If your students are not interested in what you're talking about, then they won't connect with it. Now, this is for anything at all, not just change-making things. This is for, if you're teaching the third conditional, you need to get your students to be interested in it somehow. You need to find the topic um, that's going to connect them to it. Now, if you're talking about reported speech, simply reporting back a bunch of sentences isn't interesting at all, is it? No, it's not interesting at all. You have to find something that is interesting. So you get them to become reporters on an incident they've seen. And, you know, you make it more interesting. Next up is proximity. Um, you can see me there on a, a local march that I went on not long ago. Um, well, it was a while ago because I was wearing my summer hat. So it was back in the back in the summer. And it was all about the, the state of the village because there was an awful lot of rubbish everywhere and we'd done litter picks and you know we're trying to encourage people to collect rubbish on their way into school so we went on a march around the town to kind of galvanize the people to to make a bit of a difference and we've got a small village our village is it's about eight thousand people um i'm just gonna sign a piece of paper here Hola, Hola. Hola. Muchísimas gracias. Evening, buddy. Sí, sí, buddy. okay so i'm just gonna so one moment, everybody. And here we go. Muchísimas gracias, Javi. Nos vemos. Hasta luego. Ah, déjala, no pasa nada. Muchísimas gracias, eh? Adiós. There we go. That was a uh, that was different, wasn't it? I bet you've you've not often seen that kind of switch mid session, but luckily I did forewarn you. So there you go. 
So the proximity is really very important. Um, this was one of the big issues I had with when um, when we were talking about this one unit that we had in the book, that one unit that was all about the ice melting in the Antarctic. That's not close to our students. Yes, they'll look at the polar bears and be like, oh, they're so cute, it's such a pity. But they don't have that connection. They cannot see that, you know, the thousands of years old ice sheets melting rapidly, but they can see things close to them. And then a connection. How are our students connected to these issues? In what way are our students connected to these issues? Find that connection and share it with them. It's quite easy to find a connection between young children and the planet because, you know, they're going to be living in it. They can see what's happening. You know, even my daughter, who's nine, um, has noticed a difference in temperature uh, over the summers. And yeah, obviously you know, last summer was absolutely insane. She just realises they're getting longer and longer these summers. And and yeah, she, she's not a fan of it. So she does what she can as well. And she is, of course, a kid against plastic, as we talked about earlier. So interest. How can we interest our students in what we are, what we are doing? How can we get them interested in a topic? Well, look for somebody in social media. So let's say you're talking about life underwater and you want to talk about microplastics well look online you'll be able to find an influencer online you'll be able to look at their videos and the way to help people with getting interest in that is showing them somebody of a similar age to them showing them what they can do um fiona has been an inventor for about well he said his whole life he's actually on the next series of cultivating change makers um, which, as I mentioned, is coming out in March. So you'll be able to see the interview with him and, again, share it with your students. So this is a way of getting interest in the class, showing them. And it's a horrible thing to do, but when they see the metrics of these of these people, you know, Fionn's only done, had 95 posts. He has 18,000 followers. That's not a reason to motivate students, but sadly it will motivate them. So showing them the reason he's doing it isn't for the followers, but it is, you know, to stop plastic pollution um, and reduce it, then that's a really very important factor to, to take into account. And there are change makers online everywhere, like literally everywhere. Um, you, could, you can't open an app without finding a change maker on it, which is great. Um, so stories. If you're particularly if you're using, if you're talking to younger learners, then story books are great. But get, using real stories, getting stories involved. Um, here are some of the stories I like to use with my younger students. So the Lorax um, from Dr. Seuss is, again, it's all about, you know, saving the last tree. And Greta and the Giants is all about somebody who stood up and, and protested about a forest being destroyed. And here we are. It's all about the planet Earth. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books about it um the lorax is also a nice movie um so again there's a nice connection for your students if after they've read the book they can then go and check it out so storytelling for me is a, a great way of getting our students connected and interested and seeing these problems in a kind of a more colorful view and it not just being endless doom so getting their interest is very important Proximity, do something close to your students, do something nearby. You can see in that lovely picture there, can you see that cute young lad in the corner? Can you see him there? There you go. There's me trying to save a library at the age of four. Um, although you can read the first line there says angry protesters. I was not particularly angry at that stage. That is me. Um, it's, we're not shouting for no library, by the way. It's actually no library cuts. Um, yeah, they they were trying to put like charges as well on that. So, you know, from a very young age, it was something, but it was local. It was a library down the road from me. Oh, thank you very much, Helen. Um, hopefully uh, that's the case. Um, a bit like being a teacher, I guess. Uh, so 
a way of doing this is getting photos from your neighborhood. Look for issues in your local area. Um, issues at school. Maybe you have a space where you can grow a garden. We did this at my daughter's school. So they have um, they grow food there. They eat the food. It's what we do. <laughs> you know, we go into the school and we do that. So look for issues at school. Maybe one of the big issues at school is single use plastics. Do a plastic order in your school and check it out. Look for the issues there. Local issues, littering, um, foul waterways, uh, all any kind of issues. The, I'm talking climate issues at the moment. There could be all sorts of other issues as well. Um, so please go beyond just the climate issues. There are many, many other issues that are that happen. Um, and we need to make sure we are fighting for everybody. And if it's in our proximity, it's a lot easier to do so. And then a connection. So the connection is super, super, super important to the, this last stage of engaging our students. You can find something close to your students. You can find something nearby, but if they don't feel connected to it, then they won't try and make a difference. So we need to try and include absolutely everybody. So maybe one of the issues is with inclusion in your area. Perhaps there are, there are problems, there are issues, then try and get everybody involved. Inclusion of all aspects, you know, so maybe the, the local supermarket doesn't have wheelchair access. That's something that everybody can get involved in. And it is obviously important because maybe there's a child at your school who the students know and they've seen in a wheelchair. So it's something that everyone can get behind. So trying to include everyone connects interest and then the importance to an individual and the importance to a society. So that is how we engage. In my opinion, there are obviously many other ways we can engage as well. I'm going to move on to empower. This is a word we hear an awful lot. This is something we hear all the time. I'm just going to take a sip from my Teachers Talk Radio mug. Where well, you can actually listen back to uh, Helen Slee and I. We had a conversation just the other day. Uh, and we were talking all about being a teacher. So I want to check that out. Um, there's the plug. He got it in there, didn't he, Helen? He did it. Um, so empowering our students. is It's a word we use a lot of the time. But let's look at how we can do it. We need to make sure that classes and ideas are student led, that it's not just us spoon feeding our students and telling our students. Um, the previous slide was, was the pride flag. Um, it was indeed. So uh, it's probably better if yeah, we refer to it as, as the pride flag. Um, by the way. So anyway, back to student led actions. So we need to make sure these interests come from our students. We aren't just implanting ideas into our students head saying, OK, we are going to um, we are going to clean up the streets because that's what I want to do. It's not going to help. It's not going to work if it doesn't come from your students. However, that said, we're not saying, hey, students, you go change the world. What do you want to do? Tell me. And sitting back, you know, students are going to need guidance. Now we're going to need to show them to the correct way to be. We're going to need to show our students the, the right way to, to, to go. The, the, exactly, a student-centered classroom, but they do need our help. They need us to show them certain ideas, give them ideas, give them that push because even though a lot of teenagers think they know everything, they don't just yet, um, but particularly with young learners as well, a lot of guidance along the way and more importantly, support. So if your class um, decide they want to have a meat-free Monday and they don't want the schools to serve meat anymore and that's what they want to do. So they got the guidance there, you're going to talk who they can who they can show these ideas to. So what could they do? Maybe they could write some letters to the catering company. Maybe they could write some letters to the head teacher. Maybe they could write letters to parents. You know, writing letters is very important. It's a great way to practice English. A guide on the side, yeah, but not a sage on the stage. Absolutely. Um, and then support. So if your students are taking their change making to the next level, they will need your support. So maybe they'll need you to 
help arrange an interview or help arrange a meeting or maybe somebody isn't actually listening to their ideas and they need you to support them and come in and say this is what we're going to do the ideas absolutely come from them and we just um some people are are in kind of in love with with um i'm going to put this in very much in inverted commas you say normal life there uh Mariam, I, I think you mean the, the life that they've become accustomed to. Absolutely. How could we motivate them? Well, I've got some ideas for you. That was, it's like I'd, I'd placed that question in there. So projects are a great way to get people involved. Um, one of these projects I like to do is something that happens at the start of classes is good news stories. Ask our students to bring in their good news stories. It doesn't all have to be doom and gloom. You know, bring in the good things that are happening. Check out some ideas that they've come across. Share them with the class. Talk to the class about it. This is a super simple idea. Um, I know. What would I do? What would I do? I'd probably just waffle on about something. Um, so bring in these good news stories and share these ideas uh, with the class. Maybe take those ideas to another level. Now, this one, this is my favorite teaching hack, okay? Don't tell anybody or actually tell everybody because teaching hacks are brilliant to share. So social media sharing. Hmm. Why is that a good idea, Harry? Our students are obsessed with social media. Surely we should be getting them off it. No. What we should be doing is setting our students homework to find uh, an environmental influencer that, I don't know, makes vegan recipes. Let's say we want to talk about a meat-free Monday. We'll go back to that. We ask our students, you need to go and find five different videos with vegan recipes that you would like to try and share them with each one with a different member of the class. So they have to go and look for these five different things and share them with five different people. All of your students have to do that. So they all have to share the different videos with each other. It has to be in English, of course. So you're, they're all sharing these ideas. They've all, So they've all had, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 videos about vegan recipes. They look cool, they look delicious, they see them, they try them amazing, but then lo and behold, the next day they go into their, their reels or their TikTok and there's another video because the algorithm knows that they love vegan recipes. You can also do it about other change-making ideas. So set homework to go and look for TikTok videos about whatever you're teaching in the classroom, about um, fashion and the environment. If you're talking about fashion, get them to look for the environment as well. Share the videos with each other, bring them in, show them to the class. That way, as they continue to do this on a, I don't know, a fortnightly basis. So every two weeks, we get them to do this. We get them to share their videos and share and share and share. After a while, that will be what comes up on their feed. That will be what they're looking at. Um, so, it's a great little trick. And then an eco club. This is the ultimate learner centeredness, um, as I see there. It's like everyone's just throwing tips out for me. Um, taking an eco club and getting our students to lead with their ideas. Um, it's a great way for them to think about different ideas, come up with new ideas, share them with their classmates. And then, you know, from there, they can take it on to the next level. But they have a sense of self. They have a sense of worth because they are in there doing something and they're spreading it to the wider community. And there is nothing better than a child coming out there and making a change and doing something that they really believe in. Um, and it's really easy to get students to be passionate and believe in stuff. I've done it with flags before. You know, I used to always talk about flags and I had passionate vexillologists in my classrooms. Thanks entirely to flags um love flags they're just the best after the planet obviously planet first flags next um although it's strange because i don't really like what they stand for you know national borders and so on and so forth i'm not a huge fan of the the, the nationalism and patriotism behind them i just think they look really cool uh so that's where i, I got the pictures from and finally our students are engaged they are empowered, like stamps, exactly. Um, they're engaged and they're empowered. So we've given them all these wonderful ideas. We've filled them with this sense of, of self, this sense of worth, and they're brimming. All this potential is bubbling up, you know, bursting out through probably plentiful hair, something I don't have. Um, it's bursting out 
And they're just like, oh, I need to use this energy. What do they do? We help them enact by showcasing what they have learned, showcasing what they are doing. Not all of our students are the same, though. Did you know that? They're not all the same. You can now see in this image here that no planet B sign was used by the same child in another protest. They are reusing their signs. Um, how can we get our students to enact? How can we showcase what our students are doing? Because not all students want to be, as I mentioned, Greta 2.0. So not all students want to do a presentation. How often do we force our students into doing a presentation? Because that's what it is at the end of the project. The end of this project is a presentation. So all of you have to come up here and talk for five minutes. And one person in the group's there with their arms around and the next person's there standing there reading from a book, terrified, not knowing what to say, reading the words that somebody else has written down for them and shaking because not all students like to do the same things. So we need to find a way to help our students do what they can and showcase that. So there are many other ways to share ideas. It can be a video. It can be uh, a podcast. Podcasts are brilliant. There are so many wonderful podcasts out there. Check out Teacher Talk Radio. Um, exactly. Give them options on what they want to do. Maybe you have an artist in the class and they want to paint something. Maybe you have an engineer in the class and they want to create something out of single-use plastics. You can have a gallery session where you make art out of single-use plastic. You upcycle. Um, there you go. Learner autonomy is super, super important. You can even, um, on a Friday, you can do a climate strike. Perhaps you don't want to take them out of school, but maybe at break time, maybe at playtime, they can go around, they can have a climate strike. You can teach them some charts. You can make some signs. All of these things are ways for your students in it to enact. Giving them these choices is so important. And I have three more project ideas to share with you. Um, and I should be within the 45 minutes and there'll still be time for people to ask questions um, and, you know, do anything else, anything else they need. Um, so project ideas. Oh, and if anybody wants the, the slides or the ideas, please feel free. I'll show you how to get in touch shortly afterwards. Go on a litter pick. There's me with one of my classes, me um, and the, the super girls, as I like to call them. Uh, that was before we had another gent join our class um, because we used to act like superheroes all the time because we do a five minute litter pick at the end of the lesson. So they were superheroes. They are superheroes to me. And we would do it at the end of every lesson. Five minutes. Bam. It's a five minute blitz. We just go out there. Exactly. Now they're the Avengers. Um, they're the Avengers with the, the I'm the bald dude at the back with the bag, if you hadn't guessed. Uh, so I would... You know, we go just at the end of the street, there's an area where all the rubbish blows down. So twice a week, we do five minutes, bam, we clean it up. Now, it doesn't have to be a thing we do all the time, but litter picks, there are many different ways of doing litter picks. You can do them as a community, and it's a great way for our students to show they're making a difference, but also share their knowledge. They can talk about the life cycle of a plastic bottle, because we've talked about that in class. They can talk about all these other ideas. Next up, a clothes swap. Why not? It doesn't only have to be a clothes swap. Your school could organise a book swap. Clothes swap can be for uniforms. I know schools often try and get as much money as they can out of their students by selling them a new uniform every year. Well, wouldn't it look better if your school said, hey, we're doing a uniform swap? Or, you know, they bought the uniform back and then they sold them again at a lower price. It helps everybody with cost of living. It helps the planet without having to create endless endless fashion um and your students are there to they can enjoy these other clothes and and i promise you there isn't the stigma now as there was certainly when i was young of wearing secondhand clothes if, if i ever wore a hand-me-down for my brother i would get you know all sorts from people at school ah you're poor you can't buy more clothes that's not the case anymore now it's Ah, you want to help the planet. You're awesome. That looks really cool. That's different. That's not just the same that everyone's getting in Thada. That's something new. That's something original. So these clothes swap, toy swap, book swaps, all of these ideas. Look at that. Helen did a clothes swap at university 10 years ago. And they're still wearing the clothes. Um, I don't know when I got this, um, but I should probably wash it. That's for sure. Um, 
And the, the final idea, as something I've mentioned before, um, is a letter writing campaign. All exams have letter writing in them. All of them do. You can get your students to write letter campaigns to anyone about anything. There's a brilliant one on Kids Against Plastic at the moment. And that is all about um, sending letters to the head of Tesco, uh, a supermarket in the UK, to stop them using tiny plastic toys on the front of all of their publications. So you can send letters to anyone about anything. Um, campaigning. It's a great way to practice writing as well. And I'll tell you what, when you go into your classes preparing for exams and you say to the students, hey there, you're going to write a letter to your English speaking friend who has just visited on holiday and has returned home. Ask them about their journey. Ask them about this. Tell them you can't wait till the next time you see them. those horrible, horrible, formulaic, ugh, nasty things. Um, <laughs> yeah, a letter writing campaign would definitely help that. Post offices don't sell bread, that's for sure. Um, although it would be good if they did. You could get bread at the same time as... Anyway, um, so yeah, getting your students to write these letters is something they care about as well. When you're teaching a student to write a letter, so often we do it by, okay, everybody here, look at the example. Now copy the example. Um, but change it for your own words. I know that I would always encourage my first certificate students, I would always encourage my pet students to go with write a letter because it's easier and it's an easier way to get the marks and to pass the exam. Because it is, because it's very formulaic. But you can practice these formulas, you can practice this pra practice, practice this creativity right here like this. So, woo, somehow we managed to do it within 45 minutes, but I'm not sure if uh, if Mo's going to want me to carry on for a little while because there are obviously a few minutes still, but I will share this screen with you. And if anyone has any questions, please do feel free. So as I mentioned earlier, they are there to, to be seen. So I'll, uh, there we go, there's that. Um, any questions from anybody? And thank you very much. In a moment, I'll share an, a quote with you. But before that, Mo, go ahead. Thank you, Harry, for the wonderful presentation. And, you know, let me tell you about the first comment because I do have the same comment for you. Okay. So a guy from YouTube called Dad's Books, he's saying, I like his sense of humor. Me too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Haya, could you please tell her about the other comments from the chat box? Ah, uh, yes, sure. Uh, and I think all of us loved your sense of humor, uh, Mr. Hadi. Um, Thank you. Okay, so we have many comments about a change maker. Uh, so Helen uh, was saying that once a change maker, always a change maker. I, I I hope so, and that's the aim. If we can get our students to to become change makers early on, then you know hopefully it will stick with them. Uh, and that's like one of the for me that's one of the absolute keys. If if we can get them hooked early, uh, then then they'll be addicted to change making, and they'll want to make a they'll want to go out there and make a change in the world. I'm just grabbing the the link to to my Insta if anybody wants it. Um, I'll chuck it there in the chat box if it's easier than using the the QR code um, and yeah, I'll get back yes. to the presentation there. So you can check out Insta there. Um, we can also, of course, see here. Um, and there is one tiny, one more tiny thing that I'd like to say. I apologize for interrupting. Um, but that is that everyone has change making in their DNA. It's just a matter of unlocking it. Now, as a teacher, as an educator, we've got the key. You know, we have that key. We are change makers every single day and we have that key to unlock it in every single one of our students. Now, in this thing, in, in this talk, we currently have 85 people and whoever's watching on YouTube. So, OK, 86 people and whoever's watching on YouTube. If each of us has one other change maker in our life, then suddenly we've gone up to, you know, 172. And if each one of those people makes another change maker, bam, we're on 244. You know, and it keeps growing and growing and growing. So if we can then make 
two each or three each or 30 students each. Look at the impact we could have, us 88 people. We could have an enormous impact. Yes, yes, totally. So Yunus here is saying also Mo is on his way to be a change maker by this initiative of this free online conference. And he is. He is indeed. Yes. He is making change in a creative way. Thus, he is a change maker. Yeah, uh, indeed. And we have here Julia saying thank you very much for your enthusiasm, Mr. Harry. Not a problem. I, I am incredibly enthusiastic when it comes to teacher training and the environment. So, you know, the two kind of go very well together. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. Okay. So does anybody else have any questions? Does anybody need anything? Um, yes. If you do, please feel free to get in touch. Yeah, exactly. So we have some questions here. Uh, the first question is uh, by Maryam Ayad. She says, people are kind of in love with normal life and afraid of change. How can we motivate them? I think... It's that idea of the engagement, you know, to, to motivate someone is finding something that a person is connected to, finding an issue that that will strike home to them. So when there's something you're passionate about or something that you care about, you can't just ignore it. You know, so if, for example, I don't know, somebody is somebody in your house um, is their street is always full of rubbish. You know, somebody that, that you know comes to your house and the street is always full of rubbish. Then they'll see that and it will affect them. They won't be able to ignore it. They'll have to go out and do it. Or, you know, to like even to a, a greater extent, if um, it's often people have uh, health issues like being intolerant to lactose, for example. That's, you know, that's a, a straight up, a, a fairly simple health issue that people then can't ignore. So then they can, they have to stop drinking milk. Um, it's forced upon them, but often they look deeper into it then and they see the impact that, you know, animal agriculture has on the planet. And it started off with that, that connection to the, the lactose intolerance and it builds from there. So finding something that is connected to a person, be it, you know, a food intolerance or an intolerance to litter, um, then, you know, it's finding that connection and then people will want to change. Uh, 